Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to change out the brake pads on your Can-Am Maverick X3. When it comes to brake pads, you wanna inspect these anytime you're doing routine maintenance. So if you're changing your oil, it's a good idea to take an extra minute and look at the pad life and make sure those rotors are in good condition as well. Or if you hear weird noises coming from your brakes or they're not working as good as they used to, then you definitely want to get them inspected. So we're going to show you how to do that today and get them replaced. And we're going to do it on this 21 Can-Am Maverick X3 Max, but the process will be similar for any Can-Am Maverick X3. Just make sure you reference your model specific service manual. To do this job, you're going to need some brake pads. Keep in mind that you're going to do all of the fronts at the same time or all of the rears at the same time, and the pads are different from left to right. So just be aware of that. We went with the EBC centered metal pads, but we have several options available on our website. We're also going to need a T30 Torx bit, 15 millimeter socket, and some other common hand tools, including a lug nut socket, some rags, rubber gloves, safety glasses, grease, brake cleaner, and a toothbrush. To get these brake pads changed out, we already raised our machine off the ground with a jack. We're using some jack stands as well. Just make sure you do that in a safe manner and then remove your wheel. Now, the process will be similar for both the front and the rear brakes. When it comes to inspecting the brakes, you can just look through the wheel spokes to get a general idea, but you get a better idea if you do remove the wheel. So what you're looking for is making sure you have 25% or more pad material left on your brake pad. And then for the rotor, you wanna check for any deep grooves, run your fingernail across there, and make sure there's not a ridge at the top or any cracks in the rotor. Last thing you wanna look for on this is any bluing that would indicate glazing. So if any of those conditions exist, you wanna get them repaired. So to get these brake pads replaced, what you're gonna do is loosen both of these brake pad pins with your T30 Torx bit. These ones are actually kind of snug, so just make sure you're using a nice sharp bit. With those pins loosened up, we're gonna remove both of the mounting bolts on the backside of the calipers. These take a 15 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna remove those brake pad pins. And with these pins, sometimes they get grooves in them. If these have grooves, you wanna replace them when you go back together. Now one tip with these pins is they are under a little spring tension. So if you wanna take that off, you can lightly press on the pads to help these come out. And then this outboard pad, we're just gonna roll this out. And then we'll remove that inboard pad. Next, we're gonna clean any grime away from the caliper. So we're just gonna use some brake cleaner on this and let it drain down into a drain pan. And if there's a lot of grime, Next to these pistons, you can use a toothbrush to help clean that away. So right here, there's a couple things that can help you guys out. So if you had uneven pad wear, there's a chance that the sliding pins on the caliper are seized up or really sticky. So if they don't move really smooth, you wanna get them regreased. So ours are moving really good, but we're gonna show you how to regrease them anyway. So I'm just gonna pull out on this and free the pins up from those boots. This is gonna slide right out. But from there, what you're gonna do is wipe any of that grime or dried up grease away from the pins. Then you can put some new grease on there. This Maxima grease we're using specifically says it's good for this stuff. Some people use that silicone grease on there. And when you put that grease on there, you're just doing a thin coating. This is something that a lot of people overlook. You keep replacing pads and only one side keeps wearing out. So something to be aware of. And before we stick that in, you wanna make sure you wipe any dirt away from these boots. And if it was really bad, you could even get a Q-tip or something to get some of that old stuff out of there. So we're gonna slide this back into place and make sure that those boots fully seat onto this and make that seal. So once you've done that, just clean up any excess grease. Now that we have everything cleaned up, we're ready to push these pistons back into the caliper body. Now, a couple of things with this. If somebody's topped off your brake fluid when you've had some pads that are slightly worn down, you might not be able to press these all the way back in. So if that's the case for you, you might have to open that reservoir cap. But for us, we know nobody's touched ours and these should be pretty easy to push in. And we're just gonna use a C-clamp to do that. 
But if for some reason these don't push in very easy and you have to put a lot of force on the C-clamp, then something's wrong with the piston. It's probably corroded in there and you're probably going to want to rebuild this caliper. Then from here, this is where you're going to install your new brake pads. You want to make sure that anti-rattle spring is still in place and in good condition, which ours is. So we can start with the inboard pad, set that into place. And we're actually, we're going to reuse these pads we removed. We're just showing the process. You know, this machine only has a few miles on it, but uh, we just want to show you guys how to do this process. So on that outboard pad, you're going to hook it onto the pin and set it down into place. And when you install the pins, you know, for me, it's going to be easier to start on this upper end. I'm going to press down on the pads a little bit and press down on that spring. Make sure the pin goes through both of the pads. And then if you have a hard time getting that other pin in, you can again press on the pads. Once you have both pins started, you can go ahead and we're going to put the caliper back into place. We've got a nice gap to go over the rotor. Slide that into place. Next, we're going to reinstall the caliper mounting bolts. Can-Am does recommend replacing these caliper mounting bolts with new ones, but for us, we're just applying some blue Loctite and torquing them to 37 foot-pounds. Once you've done that, you want to make sure you tighten down those brake pad pins. Now, when you tighten these, you don't want to crank on them. Otherwise, you'll never get them back out, but just make sure they're snug. Now one bonus tip that won't apply to every case, but maybe you tore your CV boot and got some grease on your brakes. If that happened to you, you definitely want to make sure the rotor is cleaned off. So you're going to spray some brake cleaner on a rag, wipe that down, and just make sure you get everything cleaned up. Now one other instance, if this looks really glazed and you want to clean it up, you can get some Scotch-Brite, go all the way around the rotor on both sides, and then again, you'll clean it up with that rag and the brake cleaner. Now you can repeat these same steps on the other side as well as for the rear brakes. And then from here, we can go ahead and reinstall our wheel and lower the machine back onto the ground. Once the machine's on the ground, make sure you pump up your brakes because the pistons need to push those brake pads next to the rotor. Changing the brake pads on your Can-Am X3 really is that easy. If you need the brake pads or any other parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of options on there and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. Thanks for watching.